My name is Troy Culbertson. I'm the administrator here at the, uh, at the Illinois Veterans Home. And today I'd like to, I'd like to welcome you to virtually uh, honor our wonderful veterans on this wonderful day. Today is Veterans Day across the United States. It's a day that we come to honor over 24 million veterans in the United States. There will be ceremonies all across the great country today, albeit restricted in some ways as we are here today. What makes this country so great are all the freedoms that each and every one of us have, and you can thank a veteran for that. So the opportunity presents itself. Please take that time and say thank you. This ceremony at the Illinois Veterans Home will conclude today at the 11th hour, on the 11th day, in the 11th month, which is exactly 102 years ago when World War I ended. I'm honored to be your master of ceremonies today at this event, which will feature our musical arrangements from Mr. Keith Wiemelt and a keynote address from a United States Air Force Master Sergeant, Carl Christner. With that said, I would like to welcome you again to our ceremony today. If, with that said, please, uh, w would you please rise, if able, so we can post the colors. Those of you that are standing, please remain standing. <clears throat> and thank you again for the members of the American Legion Post 37 this morning. Please remain standing for Mr. Keith Wiemelt as he presents our national anthem. <laughs> Thank you. Please join me with a pledge to allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time, please be seated. I would like to bring uh, introduce to you our Reverend David Hall, our Protestant chaplain here at the Illinois Veterans Home to do our invocation. Would you pray with me? Father God, we humbly come before you today 
And we're thankful for all the blessings that you've given us. Lord, we thank you for this place where we can keep a promise to care for those who have served to defend our great nation. And Lord, we ask you to bless everyone across our great nation as we remember our veterans. Lord, I ask you to bless all who are participating in this ceremony today. Bless our master of ceremonies and our musicians, Lord. Bless our administration. Lord, I ask you to bless our speaker, Carl Christner. Give him the words we need to hear in order to honor our veterans. Lord, bless the honor guard. Bless all of us here this morning. But most of all, Lord, bless our veterans. We thank you so much for each and every one of them. Whether they served in battle, in war, or in time of peace, we're thankful that you have used them to protect our way of life. Lord, may we never forget them. Help us to always remember them. You have blessed our great nation with veterans, Lord, and we love them, and we thank you for them. And we want to show them how much we appreciate all that they have done for us. Bless them, Lord, as we go through this day and every day. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I want to thank you again for tuning in today. Those of you that are on our closed circuit television and following along on Facebook, I want to start with a couple stories that have impressed something on me recently. While traveling in the past, in the past, with my wife, I have a friend, we have a friend that goes out of her way at an airport to greet every veteran that she sees. It's truly a mission for her to express her gratitude to those traveling in uniform. It's amazing to see her boldness and the great lengths that she'll go to to say thank you for your service. Most Americans, like us, profess our, our allegiance and our love for our veterans, especially in gatherings like this on a Veterans Day service or a Memorial Day service. And while our feelings are always sincere, I believe it's important that we remember that there are veterans protecting us today, de defending us 365 days a year. The heroism that has been demonstrated time and again by veterans from the American Revolutionary War to the global war on terrorism is sometimes unnoticed by those of us who enjoy the security that their sacrifice has provided. In one of my recent readings, Army Staff Sergeant Clinton Romisha has, has seen war at its very worst. While serving in combat outpost Keating in Afghanistan, he and his comrades were awakened to an attack by an estimated 300 enemy fighters on October 3rd 2009. According to his Medal of Honor citation, Staff Sergeant Romisha took out, an, took out an enemy machine gun team and then engaged in taking out a second machine gun team, which is when he received shrapnel wounds from a rocket-propelled grenade, but he continued on. He killed at least three other Taliban fighters and directed air support to destroy an additional 30 enemy fighters. After receiving the nation's highest Medal of Honor, Staff Sergeant Romisha said that he felt conflicted about the attention that he was receiving. He said, the joy comes from recognition of us doing our job as a soldier on distant battlefields but it's countered by the constant reminder of the loss of our battle buddies, my battle buddies, my friends. Sometimes I personally need to remember. I need to remember the loss, to reflect upon the sacrifice, so I can appreciate the freedoms that we all have. For me, it's a time of healing of the soul. It's especially fitting on this post-election period that we use this day to reflect on these freedoms. 
and bring our nation together in unity. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if I may, I would like to turn things over to our musical guest, Mr. Keith Wiemelt, for some musical arrangements. this time, I would like to introduce our adjutant, Mrs. Dawn Whitcomb, here at the Illinois Veterans Home, and she can introduce today's speaker. Good morning, and happy Veterans Day to all of you. This morning, I have the privilege to introduce our guest speaker, Master Sergeant Carl Christner. Master Sergeant Carl Christner grew up in Duluth, Minnesota and upon graduating from Denfield Senior High School, he enlisted into the United States Air Force in 1985. Carl completed basic military training at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. Immediately following graduation from BMT, he, com he completed command and control specialist training at Kessler Air Force Base in Biloxi, Mississippi. After tech school, Carl was assigned to the command post at Hill Air Force Base in Ogden, Utah. Peterson Air Force Base, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and then Falcon Air Force Base, Colorado Springs, Colorado. And during those 13 years, Carl was also assigned to two overseas locations, one in the Netherlands and one in South Korea. In 1998, Carl was selected for a special duty assignment as an Airborne Command Control Manager with the Strategic Command Airborne Command Post Looking Glass at Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska. After completing three years of alert duty at Looking Glass, he was then selected to fly with the National Airborne Operations Center, the NAOC, also at Offutt Air Force Base, Nebraska. Carl's last duty assignment was with the 725th Air Mobility Squadron Naval Station, Road to Spain nice you served with the Navy yep. so yep. just kidding uh, where he was the superintendent of the Air Mobility Control Center after retirement in 2007 Carl worked for the Missouri Department of Corrections the city of Hannibal and currently for the Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railway as a conductor Carl's also a member of the VFW post 2486 where he was the post commander from 2010 to 2014 Master Sergeant Christner's personal awards include the following, the Defense Mator uh, Meritorious Medal, the Meritorious Medal, Aerial Achievement Medal, the Joint Commendation Medal, the Air Force Commendation Medal, the Joint Achievement Medal, 
the Air Force Achievement Medal, Combat Readiness Medal, the Korean Service Medal, and the Global War on Terrorism Medal. Senior enlisted air crew wings, a master command and a control badge, and a basic space operation badge. Carl and his wife, Susan, who works here at the Veterans Home in Quincy, have been married for 30 years. They have one adult son and two adult daughters. They reside in rural uh, New London, Missouri. Please help me welcome Master Sergeant Carl Christner. get ready for this. Good morning ladies and gentlemen, uh, my fellow veterans that I see in the crowd today. Uh, thank you for allowing me this great honor to speak at your Veterans Day service. You know I can't think of any better place to be today than celebra celebrating and honoring the veterans here at the Quincy Veterans Home. I just hope that I'm up to the task. I once read that President Reagan was asked if our country still had heroes and he stated, yes, you just need to know where to look. He told that person to visit Arlington National Cemetery. And I would add, come visit our veterans here at the Quincy Veterans Home. I read an email that my wife received from Rick Gennenbacher. The subject was Happy uh, Founders Day. It briefly covered some history of the Illinois Veterans Home, but more specifically, the first Founders Day back in October 19th, 1886. One of the people who addressed the crowd that day was a Private Joseph Wilson Pfeiffer. It seemed as though Private Joe had to say was pretty good because two years later, he was elected governor of the state of Illinois. And I realized at that time I had some big shoes to fill. My wife Susan told me I should say a few words about myself normally I'm pretty uh, forthcoming on that and, and I like to speak about myself, but today is Veterans Day, so I'll be brief about what I have to say about myself. As Don said, I, I joined the Air Force back in 5th of April, 1985. I wish I could say it was because of deep sense of patriotism, but that would be less than, less than truthful. Honestly, I needed a job and my dad started looking at me like I had overstayed my welcome. I think he was tired of dealing with, with me for 19 years. Even as a young kid, I realized the Air Force offered a pretty good deal. Training, free education, medical, dental care, and travel. And later, an added bonus of meeting my wife-to-be while I was assigned to a NATO base in Holland. Over our first tour together with Susan in Colorado Springs, I was assigned to several units within Air Force Space Command. And after three years in the Air Force, they sent me to South Korea, where I was, South Korea, where I was assigned to an Air Mobility Command Center supporting cargo aircraft coming in and out of South Korea. I spoke with a couple of the gentlemen earlier, and, and they're pretty familiar with uh, Korea. I'm pretty sure it's changed quite a bit from when you were there. After completing my tour, I was reassigned back to the Colorado, uh, back to Colorado Springs with the 50th Space Wing at Falcon Air Force Base. If you ever visited Colorado Springs, you'd realize it was a great place to live, but Space Command was burning me out. I needed a change. I volunteered to fill a special duty assignment at Offutt Air Force Base in Omaha. I was selected to fill an airborne position on Strategic Air, uh, Air Command's command post, and I realized that position was going to be good for my career, and it opened the door for my next tour at the National Airborne Operations Center, also known as NAOC. NAOC, to some of you, may, may have seen it in the movie Some of All Fears, which accurately depicts what that aircraft looked like on the inside. Its mission is to provide backup command and control platform for the President of the, of, uh, and the National Military Command Center, the Pentagon, where if the Pentagon were to be destroyed. And just a side note, the closest we ever came to doing our wartime job was during 9-11. My final and favorite assignment was at Naval Road, uh, Naval Station Road to Spain. I was selected to be the superintendent of the 725th Air Mobility Control Center. We supported all mobility aircraft arriving and departing the Iberian Peninsula. 
What's not like what's not to like about South or South Spain? Twenty two years later, twenty two years flew by after my tour in Spain was completed. I decided to retire on September first, two thousand seven. Along the way, I managed to learn a few things, mainly because I worked with and with and for some amazing professionals that invested in me. But every veteran knows our education and training begins in boot camp or what the Air Force calls basic military training at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio. So with the help with my training instructor, I learned a few nuggets of wisdom. The first lesson I learned was I was no longer a human being. I was a worthless maggot unworthy of oxygen that I breathed. Secondly, the world did not revolve around a young airman basic prisoner. That came as a real shock to a 19-year-old boy. The third lesson, there are no individuals in the Air Force, and to be called one was an insult, and you, would, you were better off being in maggot status. My fourth lesson, never tell a training instructor you have experience as a janitor, definitely not a good idea. My last lesson, it was perfectly clear to me that I came all the way from Duluth, Minnesota just to tick my instructor off, and I assured him that it wasn't the case. I don't think he heard me, though. No one succeeds in the Air Force or the military on their own. You succeed as a unit. It is that harsh treatment and that breakdown of the individual that I mentioned previously that paves the road to mission success and ultimately ensures the national security is maintained. This is what the American military does. It takes young men and women and turns them into contributing members to the military and to the communities they live in. In retrospect, I didn't mind or I didn't like being a maggot, but it was amazing what a little bit of negative reinforcement can do. So after I learned how not to be an individual, I sensed what I was doing mattered, and I was involved with something way more important than I could ever be. I also came to realize being in the Air Force instilled a sense of pride in myself that comes from serving your country with some of the best people our country has to offer. Serving your country can be at times a dangerous profession. As a result, some soldiers, sailors, Marines, airmen, and Coast Guard will never make it home. Some veterans have the visible damage of their service while yet others serve si suffer silently from the horrors they have experienced, while others are blessed to be unharmed. Through it all, each are welcomed into the Brotherhood of Veterans. I am very proud of the contributions that my family has made. It starts with my wife who served in the Air Force for five years. But it didn't stop there. She also unselfishly held down the home, in front, the home front for 17 years, taking care of three children while I served and played in the Air Force. Through deployments, schools, a short tour, and many long hours and days and nights, moving from base to base is not an easy task on our kids either. But I honestly believe that they would all say that they wouldn't trade their experiences for anything. In short, what I'm trying to say is military families are special as well. I had two uncles that served in World War II, one in Korea and seven in Vietnam. I remember as a young boy, my grandma had a spare bedroom where me and my brothers in our explorations of her house found all sorts of medals and patches that were there. We thought they were cool as young boys would. I did find it odd though, my uncles never talked about any of that stuff, we, we, that, the stuff that we thought was cool. I later learned more about Vietnam. The one story that involved my uncle James, we called him Manny. My uncle was shot in Vietnam and was sent back to Denver to a VA hospital there to recover. While he was there, protesters were outside the hospital ground screaming awful things at the military members inside. Thank God those days are over. The night before I left ba for basic training, my uncle Manny told me he was proud of me. Coming from a Bronze Star recipient, that meant an awful lot to me, even more now that I understand what the Bronze Star is a reflection on. You know, none of my uncles will be remembered as great men to those that didn't know them, but to me and my brothers, they will always be our heroes. 
I can't help but feel they had a part in us enlisting. My brother Bob and my brother Mark joined the Navy. My younger brother enlisted in the Air Force. To you veterans out there who served in Vietnam, welcome home. And thank you for your service. I'm very humbled to be counted amongst the men and women to me. To me all deserve another title of hero and worthy of our admiration. Today we are blessed not to have to look very far to find some. We need to look no further than the men and women that live here and the men and women that are here present with us today. But as far as I am concerned, putting the uniform on and raising the right hand and reciting the oath of allegiance makes them worthy of our deepest gratitude. I challenge you all to get to know these veterans. Volumes can be written about what they experienced and accomplished. I recently heard a speaker say that evil is powerless if, good, if the good are unafraid. I know on this campus there were men and women who were afraid but still did what they needed to do to get the job done. That's what heroes do. What our veterans have done for us and the sacrifices they endured made while serving our great nation makes them, in my opinion, our nation's finest. In closing, I would like to read a short Bible verse from John 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Thank you. Thank you, Master Chief Carl Christner. Appreciate those words. Impactful. I was sitting there thinking about uh, how a lot of what you have been through relates to what we do as care delivery team on this campus. Uh, and I'm, I may share those thoughts here in a little bit. But right now, I would like to once again thank and introduce Mr. Keith Wemelt, our musical entertainment. So if you would, please, Keith. Thank you.
a long. We're going to do America the Beautiful.
join me with America, where my country is of you. Thank you very much, Keith. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, we've reached the wreath laying portion of today's program. At this time, in a little different tradition, we'll be laying 13 different wreaths simultaneously across our campus. Here in our chapel, as we're doing our service here this morning, all are being done in memory of our veterans. From Markward 1, we'll be having Mr. Kenny Denny laying the wreath. Markward 2, Mr. Wayne Schuster. Pfeiffer, Mr. George Herendine. Shapers A, Mr. John McDaniel. Shapers B, Mr. Leroy Veach. From our Anderson building, this is Patty Willard and Mr. Tom Spore. From Somerville, Mr. William Willette. From Hammond, our Hammond facility. On our Fort Murphy, Mr. Bob Wisher. On Fort Chaplin, Mr. Don Doris Reinhardt. Fort Allen, Mr. Bill Hull. And on Camp Gage, Mr. Junior Huddleston. Camp Aston, Mr. Donnie McQueen. Representing us here in our service in the All Faiths Chapel, we'll be having our guest speaker, Master Sergeant Carl Christner, lay our wreath for us at this time. Thank you, Mr. Christner. We appreciate your time. At this moment, we're going to invite again our adjutant, Ms. Dawn Whitcomb, back up to the stage to recognize some of our veteran service organizations around the area. We have many veterans organizations here in the area that support us. I'd like to read those. American Legion, 
the American veterans, the AMVETs, the Catholic war veterans, the disabled American veterans, the DAV, the Daughters of the American Revolution, the Elks Club, the ex-prisoners of war, the Jewish war veterans, the Korean war veterans, the Marine Corps League, the Military Order of the Purple Heart, the Navy Club, the Paralyzed Veterans of America, Pearl Harbor Survivor Association, Reserve Officer Association, the Veterans of Foreign Wars, the Vietnam Veterans of America, the Adams County Area Vietnam Veterans, the Women Overseas Service League, the Veterans Employment Officers, and all of the Veterans Service Officers across the state of Illinois. I'd like to also recognize all of the recruiters, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and the Coast Guard. Thank you to all who support. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to that 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. In a moment, we're going to observe a moment of silence followed by a 21-gun salute from the American Legion, post 37, and a firing squad, firing squad, and then the playing of taps by Mr. Jeff Shooking this morning. So if you would, for the next minute, please follow with me in a moment of silence. Please welcome back Reverend David Hall with our benediction. <clears throat> Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, as we close out our ceremony this morning, we just want to thank you one more time for our, our wonderful great nation, for our people, even for our government, and most of all for our veterans. But even more than that, Lord, 
We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who has given us the ultimate example of what it means to lay down one's life for a friend. We're thankful, Lord, for our veterans who have followed his example and offered their life to defend us and serve our nation. When they entered their respective branches of the military, they had no way of knowing if they would finish their time, and yet they willingly served anyway. May we never take the sacrifice of Jesus Christ nor the sacrifice of our veterans for granted. Bless them, Lord, and bless our United States of America. Amen. Thank you, Dave. As we close our ceremony, it's time for the American Legion Post 37 to retire the colors. If you're able, please rise as we salute our colors. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for tuning in. Before we leave today, I'd also like to say thank you to our entertainment, Mr. Keith Wemel. I'd also like to thank our guest speaker today, Mr. Uh, Master, Master Sergeant uh, Carl Christner, and especially the Legion Post 37 Honor Guard, who uh, admirably uh, post our colors for us in these programs. In conclusion today, ladies and gentlemen, I as the administrator of the Illinois Veterans Home, it has been a pleasure and an honor to serve as your Master of Ceremonies today on this Veterans Day 2020. It's an honor to serve and it's, it's an honor to serve those who have protected our freedoms. God bless all of our veterans and God bless America.